Hello there, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash, I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. And it's my job as your host here to help you on your pilgrimage to Chap Nirvana by offering some suggestions and advice. And advice is the name of the game today because I've received a uh, correspondence from a viewer. Now I'm not going to name this viewer because I'm sure you know there's some discretion required and I don't want to embarrass this chap but he's written to me and said the Lord Lieutenant of my county has invited me to a less formal luncheon followed by Evensong at church to celebrate King Charles's coronation. My question is simply what attire would be appropriate for both events? I will be representing a charity as its president, so I must make a good impression. So the coronation is upon us. I'm um, filming this in the week prior to the actual coronation, which will be on the weekend ahead. And of course, it is, as this letter suggests, a great national occasion where uh, many of us will be celebrating that coronation, not just here in the UK, but in the many territories and other countries of the Commonwealth who share that affiliation with the monarchy, which um, rules in this country and over a number of other countries as well. And doubtless there'll be many occasions where people will be going to special events, special gatherings, special church services, meals, luncheons over this coming week to celebrate it this most special thing because you know it is for most of us a once in a lifetime event the last coronation took place in 1953 many years before my birth and uh, you know these are significant historical events you want to make sure um, you feel your best and look your best if you're attending one of these events so it's not just a mere public event it's something which will linger in the history books and interestingly, I've had a number of similar inquiries from many gentlemen who are attending events uh, to mark the coronation, and they too have been uncertain about what attire would be appropriate to wear. So please, if you're out there thinking, I've been invited to this event, I don't know what's the right thing to put on, I've got some advice for you here today which will be helpful. Now the first step when invited to any event, be it formal or informal, uh, particularly by somebody of notoriety such as a Lord Lieutenant, and I'll explain what that is in just a moment, your first step is the invitation itself. I would get it out and scrutinise it. Now whether it's re been received in the postal system and you've got a physical card, or whether you've received an electronic invitation, have a good scrutinizing of that actual document because normally particularly on a card invitation you will find some suggestion of the dress protocol which is required at the event so normally it's in the bottom left or bottom right hand side of a card and there'll be something written on there like dress code you know national dress or uh, you know uh, mess dress for military officers or lounge suits or black tie whatever the event is there's normally an indication on there what you're expected to wear so have a look at it if it's an email read it thoroughly see if there's any suggestion of protocol um, if there isn't the next step for me if it's me would be to ring up and find out what's going on because it might sound silly having to ring up and ask what to wear to a, a public event but actually it's far less silly than turning up somewhere inappropriately dressed which means you will feel you know uncomfortable throughout the event you won't enjoy it particularly if you're as our gentleman uh, here suggests that he's representing um, a charity as its president it's manifestly important that he shows the world his best side because he is in essence you know the that the ambassador for his organization so ring up and just say look I've received this invitation there is no uh, suggestion on it what is the dress uh, code can you just give me an idea of you know what you expect people to wear and I, I can just add a point in here some of you may represent bodies and organizations which arrange such meetings all right so if you're you know a Lord Lieutenant or you're somebody who organizes luncheons or you're an events organizer it's really bad form not to indicate what people should wear to your event 
on the invitation. All right, so I suggest to you now, if you're involved in organizing events, make sure you put the dress code on the invitation. Otherwise, you're going to run the risk of people turning up, dressing wildly out of accordance with what you hope for the dress code, and they feel uncomfortable, other people feel uncomfortable, it's going to be a bad show all round. So for God's sake, put it on the invitation. Now, an important steer of the level of formality here is whom the invitation has arrived from. And in our uh, question here, it's come from the Lord Lieutenant. Now, a lot of people may not be familiar with what a Lord Lieutenant is. And in my journey through life, I've um, been involved in a number of charities, both in leadership roles and in as uh, involuntary capacity. And I have met several Lord Lieutenants from different areas, and they've all been fabulous people, but not many people know what they are. The Lord Lieutenant is the appointed representative of the monarchy in a given geographical area. And here in the UK, it's in our county system. So I'm, uh, I live in Somerset, so we have the Lord Lieutenant of Somerset, and that person represents the monarch in this area. It's a voluntary role, it is unpaid as a position, but it's a great honour, and it's generally um, something which falls to people who are quite prominent. So they've te they tend to be uh, leaders of society, people who've been prominent, maybe in the charity world, or in industry, or they've been successful in one field or another, which has led to them being identified as people who may be suitable to fulfil the role of Lord Lieutenant. There are also things called Deputy Lieutenants, and they are the, in essence, Deputy Lord Lieutenants. And there are a number of those. It can be, you know, uh, several dozen in a county area. It's a, a way of recognising prominent individuals and also if the Lord Lieutenant is in, not able to fulfil the number of responsibilities, a Deputy Lieutenant can stand up. So you can have a Lord Lieutenant in a county and maybe 10, 20, 30, depending on the size of that county, Deputy Lieutenants. Now the key thing is that they are in fact the representatives of the monarchy and they will fulfill the tasks which in our case the king would like to fulfill but the uh, sort of demand on his time is such that he is unable to do so so it's things like opening local hospitals being the patron of local charities and organizations it can be uh, the issuing of local awards the Lord Lieutenant is charged with being somebody who facilitates the national award process. So if you want to nominate somebody for a national award, like a knighthood or an OBE or something like that, the Lord Lieutenant will be the local person who uh, arranges it and facilitates it locally, or they form part of the process anyway. So it's, a, it's an important function. In essence, they are the king's proxy in a given area. And that's important because they have invited us to this event and it gives us an idea of the seriousness of this event. So, you know, if the Lord Lieutenant is present and they are the King's proxy in our area, we should dress in a way that we would have done if the King were present. So it gives us a mental idea of the level of clothing formality that we need to adopt. Now, as our uh, our letter writer here has told us they're not just attending as a private citizen, they're attending as the ambassador of their organisation. So it's a great chance for them, as it would be for anybody attending one of these many coronation events which are taking place up and down the country, to throw caution to the wind and dress up. Because nobody is going to argue if you're overdressed or underdressed in an occasion where there's a national celebration on the scale that a coronation will bring. We've got a bank holiday in this country. It's going to be a very special event. So this is your chance to throw it all at the wall and really dress in a wonderful way. Now, the two events which have been suggested here, uh, a less formal luncheon and an even song in a church uh, location, I would suggest, I would um, dress in a similar fashion because even though you say a less formal luncheon, I would dress in a way as an ambassador of your charity as the president of your charity would expect to be um, received by the people who meet you. So for me, unless the, the invitation has suggested otherwise, I would go for quite a conservative and traditional approach. Now, if it was me, I would wear a two-piece suit, right? So two-piece suit, single-breasted, in a very business-like manner. 
So it would either be a navy blue suit or a charcoal grey suit or some derivative of that. You know, if you've got a suit with a pattern on it, it's a matter for you, but a conservative colour because this is what people will expect from somebody who is a smart ambassadorial representative of your organisation. Black shoes, all right? Black is the colour which is expected for formality and in this situation I would suggest black shoes. You might offer a black cap to Oxford. I, being somewhat more um, prone to enjoy little embellishments, I think I would go for a semi-brogue, but either way, a pair of shoes with laces, all right? Slip-on shoes are not really formal appropriate. So leave your loafers at home, go for an Oxford, Worst case scenario, if you don't own a pair of Oxford shoes, go for a Derby, which is the lacing system. And whatever you've got on, whatever shoe you're wearing, make sure they have seen the polish. All right, get the polish out, get the brushes out. Make sure that those shoes are representative of how you would like to be thought of when you meet people. And if you really want to go for it, and I suggest this is the time to do so, a mirror shine. Sit down, spend half an hour, get a damn good shine on those shoes and people are not going to forget you when they see you. When it comes to the accessories, a white shirt or a, a light blue shirt, let's not be you know fussing around here and going for a patterned shirt or anything like that. Go simple, white blue or uh, sorry white or light blue, perfect. It's the background which is most appropriate for the clothing that you're about to wear. Now if you're representing a charity and that charity or organisation has some identifi identifiable feature. So say for instance um, you have a, a charity tie, a particular tie which your charity has to show recognition. You might be a member of a sports club so you can wear the, the, the rugby club tie for your club, a boating club. You might be a military man and there's a regimental tie which is appropriate for you. This is the right time to wear it, right? This is the right time to wear it. So make sure white shirt and the appropriate charity or regimental tie which is for your body because this is the time when you'll be mingling with other people they are, who are also from a similar bent, so they might be also in other charities or other public bodies or veterans of military uh, sort of service, and they will recognise that symbol, that tie, whatever it is. This is where networks are built. Similarly to the tie, if there's a lapel badge, right? If you do not have uh, a tie for your charity, make sure you wear the lapel badge, which is appropriate for your body. Again, it's an identifier, which will allow people to come up and begin a conversation. And these social events where you're, you know, you're gathering, meeting, a luncheon, particularly even song, you know, before and after the service, everybody will be meeting. They'll all be from diverse backgrounds. Anything you have, which can identify you to people, as something, you know, veteran, uh, charity worker or volunteer, this is where you need to wear it. This is where it's going to come into its own for you. And carrying on from the accessories, I would suggest maybe a pocket square, for sure. You know, if you're wearing a suit, you can't wear it naked. In other words, without a pocket square. So make sure you've got some pocket square in that pocket. If you're not comfortable with pocket squares, just a simple white fold pocket square in the presidential style, as we call it. But if you want to be a little bit more, uh, you know, avant-garde, something with a little bit more colour, perhaps, which is in keeping with the rest of your clothing. Nothing stupid. We don't want any, you know, layers of silk uh, tumbling out of the pocket. We want to be business-like and professional in appearance. We're representing something else, a bigger body. So we want to look very smart and presentable. That's all you need to give the impression that you're classy and well put together. Now I'm going to take it one step further from what I've suggested from our, uh, our uh, correspondent here because there's one other class of people that I'd like to cover, and that is uh, military people, so veterans serving military. If you're serving military, it's easy, all right? You can wear your uniform. A little bit more challenging for veterans, because we often get invited to events like this, and you never quite know how far to go in the way that you dress, because, you know, it's an important thing. We are uh, prone to desire to wear more than perhaps is appropriate. The one thing to remember is if, it, if you're in the presence of the Lord Lieutenant, as I say, they're the representative, the proxy of the monarch. And if you're serving military or veteran military, we've all sworn an oath 
to the monarch when we began our service. So this is our opportunity to go for it, all right? Make sure you're wearing your regimental tie. You may have a blazer, a regimental blazer on which you wear your regimental badge. If you've got that, for sure, this is the time to wear it in conjunction with that regimental tie. If you don't have a regimental blazer or a tie, at the very least, wear your veteran's badge. Now, the veteran's badge, for those who are unaware, these are issued by the Ministry of Defence when somebody leaves military service. It's an official badge, uh, so this is the time to wear it. You would wear it if you were in the presence of the King. The Lord Lieutenant is essentially the King's person in your area, knows the time. There's one step further you can go though, isn't there? The medals. If you hold medals, of course, all official medals are granted in the name of the monarch. In fact, the monarch's effigy, their image, are on the medals themselves. So if you're going to, say, say a luncheon has been suggested here, and an even song, um, personally, I would. I would go for it. When else are you going to get the opportunity to wear your gongs, your medals, other than an event of this nature? So get them out, shine them up, and wear them if you're wearing a standard business suit. Uh, you know, get one of those pocket protector things that slip into the pocket so you can slide your medals in. You can buy them on eBay. They're just a few pounds, a little bit of plastic. Uh, and there you're going to look smart, presentable. Your medal's on display. Nobody is going to mistake you for anything other than what you are, a proud veteran member of the military of the country and somebody who swore an oath to the monarch. So it's the right time to do it. Um, maybe the luncheon, if it's not that formal, you've suggested it's less formal, you could omit the medals there. But Depends how proud you are, you know, if you want to go for it, now's the time. Uh, some veterans even go as far as to wear their former issued berries. Personally, it's never been in my taste to do that. I've never felt comfortable wearing, you know, parts of my old uniform. I will wear my medals, I will wear a veteran's badge, I will wear a regimental tie in the appropriate situation. That's as far as I'm happy to go, but it's up to you. It's your special occasion. So, in summary, Dress conservatively, dress traditionally, but with a hint of your own style involved. Pocket square, ties, things like this. You can use these to express your own uh, individual personality. Don't forget, pay attention to the details. Make sure the shoes are shiny, that there is a crease in your trousers, that your jacket is not crumpled. You know, you get the steamer on there if there are creases on it. Look your best, but within the boundaries of being smart and presentable and not stepping into some level of sort of avant-garde style. Oh, looks like I've been joined by a friend. Hello, watch the camera. Anyway, dress smartly, dress presentably. Um, and have a wonderful time. Do not forget to enjoy yourself and soak up the moment. So I hope that was of some help to you and the event you're going to is going to be great. If you have enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. If you'd like to add something, put it into the comments. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or become a patron. And I share additional videos with my patrons every week over on our patron page. And the link to that you can find in the show notes below. And the names of my esteemed patrons you will see at the end of this video. So enjoy the coronation weekend in whatever way you're going to. Uh, have fun. Soak up history, take care of yourselves, and I will see you again very soon.